Welcome back to this week's edition of the Rock and Roll Ghost Podcast. This week we have filmmaker Emily Carmichael, who is a co-writer on the Smash box office success Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, thanks for coming on the show today, Emily. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, so, I mean, what, what does the success of the movie mean to you, first of all? First of all, it means that people all over the world are watching this story that I have had in my heart and on my computer for years and years and years. And that is really thrilling. One of the things that I realized early on in this process was like, the words that I write in this screenplay will possibly be heard by more people on earth than any other words that I will ever say or write in my entire life, yeah. which was, you know, a, a bit of pressure. Um, but now that like people are just rocking out and enjoying the movie um, and I'm getting a lot of texts from friends and family just saying like, it's a blast and we loved it and it was exciting top to finish. So that feels super good. We worked really hard. We put a lot of love into the movie. Um, and it's just good to know that it's entertaining people since that's what it is designed to do. That's great. Yeah. Now you said years and years. When did you come on board? I would have to check. Um, but it feels like many years now. It feels like a project many years in the making. Okay. Were you involved before the second one came out like were you with you early yeah off? so when i when i came on i watched cuts of fallen kingdom before it was released and um gave notes and went back and forth a little bit about the ending of that movie since it impacted our movie mm -hmm. okay that's great and then um how did I, I know that with i've talked to other screenwriters before so this is maybe a difficult question because of uh the way screen actors get, or the, the, the writers guild is uh, but what was the process of your, your writing? You know, did you write with Colin or did you do, did you work on it first and Colin took over? How did that work? Yeah, so what we did was we got together and had story sessions where we would really pound out this outline um, to get the outline to a place where it was tight enough and detailed enough that we could start to write off it and logistical and story problems had been worked out in the outline before we started taking it to the page. Um, then in general, for most of the script, I wrote the first pass of the pages. Um, I would send them to Colin, he would revise them, he would send them back to me, I would revise them and send them back to him. I realized late in this process that at some point when he revised them and sent them back to me, I could have been like, oh, this is great, I, I love it. And we could have progressed from there, but I really think every single time he sent it back to me, I, I felt this, I felt this need to be like, oh, I have to like to put my uh, put put my my I have to I have to give my input on these pages. I have to progress. Yeah. I have to change them into something into something new. So so there was like a ton of revision um, of the movie before shooting ever started. Okay, so it was more of a collaborative uh, experience then. Oh, deeply collaborative, deeply collaborative. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. sometimes on, on, on the blockbusters, you don't have that happen, you know, so sometimes- Yeah, for, for, for Pacific Rim, um, that was such a wild process. And in a way, it's like they were sort of opposite blockbuster processes because for Jurassic World Dominion, like we had time. Um, yeah. you know, we had to, we had time to work on the script and, and Pacific, for Pacific Rim Uprising, it was just like, we're shooting this, they're shooting this movie tomorrow. Like they need yeah. <laughs> they need a script. Um, so like me and Kira Snyder were actually simultaneously working on the first half and second half of Pacific Rim Uprising, um, which we would then send to Steve Denise the director who would then rewrite them and like synthesize them together um so yeah. this was not that like me and colin were really like you know in conversation the whole time and luckily um you know he's like such a great collaborator just super fun and chill to work with um so you know that was a really that was a really fun process yeah that's great no it's it's really surprising and yeah i had noticed uh the the credits for Pacific Rim Uprising and um, I wasn't sure how that you know I, I didn't want to get too much into that because it sounded like that was a more complicated effort you you summarized it pretty well I think um, 
I'm, but, I'm, I have a huge poster for Pacific Rim Uprising in my. Oh, I can imagine. I can uh, imagine. That's, I mean, that was, that's your, that was your first um, big, big credit on screen. Yeah. 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 That's still a pretty solid credit to start with. Yeah. Uh, you've been doing all sorts of things. You've been doing short films and, and, and the like, and yeah. you're, you're, um, I believe I've read that you're working on your debut, like feature film in, in some yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a, so a about that. I'm a writer and director, and I started off um, writing and directing short films, some of which were live action and some of which were animated, um, which did the festival circuit. So my short films, The Adventures of Lido and Nix, are animated movies in the style of an 8 bit video game. Um, and and through those movies, you know, I met people, I met other filmmakers, um, I met the filmmaker who ultimately introduced me to Colin. Um, so that's really how how I got my start. My intention always uh, has been to be a writer and director. So right now, um, with Jurassic Out in the World, which is this very um, collaborative, big budget thing that I was a part of, I am now ready uh, to make something that is all mine and that really shows off the specificity of my voice. Um, so that's sort of that's sort of what's next on my plate. Even though there are also some really exciting um, studio opportunities coming my way, so I'm sort of like figuring that all out. I am a person who like I genuinely love and thrive on studio assignments. Like I will, uh, you know, they really they really light up my mind, and I and I take I take a lot of like love and care um, and commitment and excitement to them. So I don't feel um, I don't feel like I am you know being uh, stilted as an artist um at the same time there is a difference between something that you made with a bunch of people and a giant movie studio um, and something that you made yourself that shows off your voice yeah no i absolutely i, I totally get that so you've, yeah. been doing, you've done a lot of work uh perhaps not released or uh yeah. perhaps not, yeah, yeah. Not, for every uh, you know, for every released movie that somebody uh creates it's like you know, there's like 10, there's 12, like sometimes there's 20, like some people have, there are people out there who've written 20 scripts. Um, yeah. I've gotten one of them made. Um, and and yeah. ba basically what I have learned is that it's basically fine. It's like, you wanna see your work made, obviously everybody wants to see their work on screen, um, but just the chance to write a script and to like be compensated for that and get to like live in dignity as an artist because living with, with in dignity as an artist can be difficult. You know, if you're an artist um, and you are working other jobs to make money, which is the condition of most artists, right? Like most yeah. artists this um, are artists who um, have to do something else to support themselves. Um, and that can be really rough and it can feel like the world is not honoring your art or like your art doesn't matter. I always like to think of like the, the Thanksgiving test, which is like, if you're having Thanksgiving with your family and somebody needs to pick up something to bring to family Thanksgiving um, and you tell your mom, I can't do that because I'm working, does your mom say, okay, I'll ask your brother to do it. Or does your mom say, are you working or are you doing something for fun? Are you working on your hobby? Um, there yeah. is this one in which like the world respects our work more when it's <laughs> compensated under a capitalist system. And that can be really rough when your work is not. So if you are watching this and you are an artist and you do work other jobs to support yourself, like I see you, it's rough, I feel you, um, but don't lose hope because your art still matters, it's still important. Yeah, well, I would imagine that even in those cases where you're writing something for a studio or a production company or whatever, and perhaps it doesn't get made, and but you did at least earn something off of it, but you also earn word of mouth from having worked on it. Well, it did get, yeah. but this producer or executive or whoever said, well, you know, they were great, you know, the, what they did was great, we just, the project couldn't come together. Yeah, yeah, so my uh, my script for The Black Hole um, has not been made yet, hopefully it will be made, um, but Colin read that script and that was, on the strength of that script, he offered me uh, Jurassic World because yeah. it was a strong script. So that's like, stuff can absolutely impact your life and help you move to the next thing, even if the movie doesn't get made, because people can read. People can read and people in the industry base their opinions of writers off of their writing samples, which are things um, that they have written themselves. Um, so, you know, 
all my writing samples are just Emily Carmichael scripts that I wrote um, and are things that might not necessarily have been produced. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I noticed the, the black hole was in your uh, upcoming list and you know, whether or not, whatever the status of that is, but- I'm so freaking excited about that movie. I bet you're gonna watch, I bet you're gonna get to watch that movie in theaters. I bet it's- Well, that, that's me. cool because yeah, I, I remember seeing the, I'm old enough to have seen the original in the theaters, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so and I think, that... hopefully, I think hopefully fans of the original like the new one. Um, so I did this thing, I'm sorry, I'm gonna nerd out on black no, hole. No, no, go first. ahead. Listen to this if you're a fan of Black Hole. So Maximilian is this robot that a lot of people, um, especially you know people around my age who were young when they saw uh, the Black Hole, um, found terrifying because Maximilian is like the, a, a red murder robot. <laughs> um, I what I did with the Maximilian, like I, I I hope is cool and like I think is cool. I transformed it into a hull repair robot, so it's a, a spider-like hull repair robot, it's giant, you know, it can bend steel because it needs to do that to repair spaceships, um, but it's always sort of clattering around on the outside of the ship. And then once once it gets inside, it's like, it's it's not even supposed to be like on the ship. Um, yeah. So I don't know, I, 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 I think it's rad. I think it's like, I think it's the um, a cool modern upgrade, but I'm also really eager to see like what what fans think and if they if they like it. Yeah, no, I I I'm, I would look forward to actually checking that out. Um, as, as I said, you know the the originals, you know, it's got, you know, it it suffers a bit in time. I think, um, to yeah. some degree, but I think also seeing that as a kid, it was like, you know, I was all after Star Wars, I was all in for any sci-fi film. Yeah, the black hole was a big deal, but it was honestly that film was a little more terrifying uh, than most Disney films tend to be. <laughs> Yeah, it has some real eeriness to it. Um, you know, they they sort of ride into hell at that end. <laughs> like it's intense. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, you know, hopefully my version um, uh, is a a little faster and funner um, with sort of high action stakes um, throughout. Um, but hopefully that that eerie element and that cosmic element, right? Because it's about standing at the brink of a black hole and like staring deep into the heart of the abyss. Hopefully yeah. that cosmic element is maintained. Yeah, well, no, it's very cool. So, well, let's talk a little bit more about Jurassic World. Um, you know, were you on set as well for- uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't get to be on set as much as I wanted to because of COVID. Like I really wanted to be on set for the shooting of the Malta action sequence. Um, and I didn't get to do that. God, I love that action sequence so much. It makes me so happy. Yeah. Um, but I got to be on set. I got to, I got to be on set for a lot of it. Um, I was bubbled with the actors. Um, so I got to hang out with them and like meet them and talk to them about their characters and um, be on set with them and watch the movie get shot and, you know, talk to Jeff Goldblum about his many alternate suggestions for his lines and like riff with him on that. Um, yeah. And, like, you know, talk with Bryce Dallas Howard about like the future of our industry and like be there for the phenomenon that is Dewanda Wise playing the role of Kayla Watts. Um, She's she's so incredible because that actor, you know, I I I think I wonder this um, with um, with women who are t carrying a lot of toughness on screen. I'm like, is that like how much of that is acting and how much of that is like naturally your vibe? And I would say that like Duanda is, um, you know, fierce and all of those things in person. Um, but she but she in real life is, I would say, like more fluid, uh, more of a fluid chameleon shapeshifter. Um, and that character that she brought to uh, to Kayla Watts is really something that like she created and maintained through her craft. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it was there. It was a lot of fun. You mentioned, you know, the the three actors from the original. Well, I, four if you include B.D. Wong. Um, which you, know, which you should <laughs> was such an awesome thing to have all three of them back uh and and actually getting you know a fair amount of screen time you know it, it, it felt yeah. like a hybrid film of you know a sequel to the the original and and the new ones um uh, how how early on did you did the plans get to to have all of them back um, it, it, that was set, that was in motion from the start. So I got to be there on the day when Colin sent me a text that was like, it's confirmed, like original cast is all in, they're all coming back. Um, but that was, that was fast. It didn't take a lot of convincing. I think everybody was, was really excited and felt like the right time. Um, and you can just, you know, hear in how the actors talk about it, that they were 
delighted to be um, to be back together on set, um, especially since it was taking place at such a strange time during the pandemic when like the people you were making the movie with were the only people that you got to see because we were all uh, you know trapped in this hotel um very nice place to be trapped um you know if you're going to pick somewhere uh yeah. to be unable to leave for months and months it was an excellent place um but i think you know like overall the vibe on set um was was really positive and also really peaceful like it didn't feel and i think you know this is like tribute, um, at, you know, in a lot of ways to Colin and to his leadership. You can tell when you arrive on set and like the movie's not going good uh, um, because then there's there starts to be a lot of stress um, and there cannot be a lot of stress and there can be a lot of dysfunction. Um, so at least in my time on set, I, I did not witness um, stress and dysfunction. I witnessed like artists who basically felt happy and lucky to be doing what they were doing. That's great. That's great. And so was. Was the entire production in the same hotel or how did that work? It was, it was like, um, yeah, it was like most of, you know, core cast was in the same hotel. Um, there were different rotations. Um, some of, some of the cast, you know, had already uh, gone back home by the time that I got there. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, it's like, we were all, we were all bubbled together. Okay, that's that's kind of cool. That's kind of, and then obviously, you know, I've, I've talked to many people during, you know, during co filming during COVID and there was that whole process of, you know, staging where you go from one place to another and keep getting tested, I would imagine. Yeah, you, you know, you got tested a lot. Um, this was um, the part that I was there for was the soundstage portion. Um, so luckily there wasn't a lot of sort of transit or company moves to be taken into account. Cause like, I cannot even imagine for a production that has to, um, physically like move around that much to be doing that with COVID protocol seems unimaginable. Um, but like the, the, the protocols, you know, it was a big deal. Um, it added to the production cost of the film, obviously. Um, by the time I got there, they, they felt pretty well in place and um, they felt pretty, uh, like pretty well worked out and like they weren't introducing a lot of like chaos or burden into the process. Yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Um... What, uh, well, I just, because I have to go back to the cast. You mentioned talking to Jeff Goldblum. What, what is Jeff Goldblum? I mean, I feel like he's like how I always see him in interviews and stuff. He's that. Yeah, that's, that's him. That's him. That's, that's him through and through. He's exactly like you think that he's going to be. He does not disappoint. It is wonderful. Yeah, he was, he was a particular delight in, in watching the film. So I, I've been a big fan of his. I think the first time I saw him on screen was probably, I just rewatched it actually, it was the right stuff and maybe Big Chill, I, one of the two. And I I remember for instantly, you know, liking him. So I've been a big, you know, huge fan of his for, for decades now. And um, it, it's just a thrill to have him and, and Laura Dern and, and uh, Sam Neill be a part uh, of this one, it, it, just, it brought back the memories of seeing Jurassic Park for the first time. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's that's the goal. I would say the single biggest surprise among the cast in terms of their like off-screen personality is probably Bryce Dallas Howard, just because Claire, um, you know, it's like she's she's very passionate. She's like passionate and sincere and vulnerable. Um, and in real life, Bryce Dallas Howard does, she does have this part of her that's like sort of like a, like a, uh, a disobedient 12 year old boy. She like, just like, she has this like mayhem sense of humor and like getting to one of the things that I got to do was, was watch the dailies um, uh, of the movie for the, for the portions that like I hadn't been there for. And in between every take that Chris and Bryce are in, it's just them cracking each other up like this. <laughs> And then the cameras roll and it's like, oh, we have to rescue our child from these dinosaur thieves. Um, uh, so, so I would say, I would say that she's, she's the biggest, the biggest contrast between on-screen and off-screen persona. Yeah, she, uh, she's gotten to become uh, quite a very, very good director too. Uh, yeah, it's super exciting. She's done so far. And I, it's, it's kind of rare to see a, a, a actor, not so rare, but I mean, actors, you know, always want to, not always, but a lot of times want to be directors and it's a cliche, right? What I really want to do is direct. That's, yeah, uh, yeah. But she, she does hard. she does a really good job of it. So I'm yeah. looking forward to what she does next as well. Um, you know, because that's just gonna be really interesting. You have an animal back there? 
I was looking at that object over my left shoulder and I was like, what is that? I was like, <laughs> Are you I thought maybe you had like a cat walking around that I missed. Oh, I was just like suddenly like. <laughs> um, well, are are you working on anything right now? I mean, are you working towards I'm working on everything? I'm working on everything. Oh, um, hello. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Hello. I think I pulled up my uh, my uh, cord. Sorry, and I didn't hear. So, yeah, just we'll yeah. take. You. So, what are you working on right now? Um, <laughs> There is a couple. There are a couple of cool um, studio opportunities that are sort of in the works. I might be joining a new comic book universe, okay. um, sort of writer and uh, creative overseer, and hopefully director. Um, I um, uh, have been chatting with the folks at Riot Games because oh my god, I just loved Arcane so much. I just thought it was so freaking cool, uh, and they have such a database of characters there. Um, so I might be doing something in that universe, and then I'm working on my own projects because having made this big collaborative, um, big budget movie that was such an effort from so many different people, I'm excited to have something out there that's all my own. Great. But yeah, that, I mean, it, it, so everything's kind of in flux right now. Nothing to, nothing really, nothing concrete yet, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, what? let me ask you, what inspired you to become a filmmaker? I, so for me, the start of the process was writing and drawing. So I would write and I would draw. I would make picture books when I was a really little kid. So I've been, I, I feel like I have been at this for, I've been at this my whole life. Like my whole life I've been using um, words and visual art to reach others and to like bring people together. A big moment for me was fourth grade. Fourth grade was when our teacher, uh, David Snellen would read our work out loud. Um, and when he would read something that I wrote in the class would laugh. That was amazing. And like, I was like, oh, <laughs> it's like, I need, I need more of this in my life. Um, so, so in a way that's kind of the, the first moment of like me becoming a storyteller for an audience, because of course, you know, the progenitor art form of all of these different art forms is somebody who's just like getting up and just telling a story um, to a bunch of people. Uh, but then in college, I started writing and directing plays and that was just so fun and so exciting and really changed the course of my life because I was like, I want to write words and create characters and direct them and bring them to life with actors and with designers as part of a creative team. This is what I want to do with my time on this earth yeah what was what was your first experience like uh when you found when you did i, I mean i guess what was your first experience working in hollywood in, in terms of getting your first job i mean you don't have to say what it was but what was the experience like wow so in hollywood you know my first my first like official employed job was Powerhouse, which is um, a movie that me and Colin wrote together that you might someday uh, get to see. Um, okay. But then the real like trial by fire in terms of like a film that's like, you know, imminent that's about to happen script or not was Pacific Rim Uprising. And that yeah. moment, that was a great moment because just like realizing that like I could write on time and I could meet the time deadlines that we had. Um, was a giant relief because as an artistic person, I have tended to take time to make my art um, and just and just knowing that I could meet the demands um, of a schedule and of a collaborative industry where the script needs to be done so that other parts of the machine can work, that was a big triumph for me. Yeah, yeah, I have to imagine that was pretty stressful though, uh, working on was, that with it was, that kind it of time constraint. Stressful. I was just like in, I was in LA at the time. Um, and I think I, I think I maybe didn't have my place or maybe I was, the studio was putting me up in hotels. So I was just like going to cafes, like writing, like had to write like, you know, five pages a night, um, which uh, is, that's a standard pace. Like that's not, that's not too demanding, but like it was, you know, it was my first time. So it was, it was pretty, it was pretty stressful. And then, and then that moment when it was like, we have, we handed the script, we handed the script in on time. It's like, what's, you know, the next thing can happen now because we, we did it. We, we met the yeah. target. Um, that was really, that was really great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what, yeah, I just got one final question for you. What, what were, was the film or the films that inspired you uh, early on? Wow. I mean, 
uh, you know, I like Indiana Jones, um, those movies, watching those movies with my family. Um, we had a great experience as a family watching The Fugitive. That was actually like one of the first times when I witnessed like the capacity of a well-made action movie to really bring people together. Um, because in the essence of action is that you can see the stakes, the stakes are physical. Um, that's that's the difference between action and the other genres. And because you can see the stakes and the stakes are physical, um, uh, action, action adventure can really transcend a lot of language barriers and cultural barriers and are something that like everybody can come together to watch. That's awesome. That's a that's a that's a solid, those are solid picks, actually. Um, I've been trying to get an uh, interview with Andrew Davis for for a while now. Right. He's all he, I, he must be working on something because he's always busy, but um, they promise one day. But he's a – I'm a Chicago guy. He's a Chicago guy. So um, I've always been a fan of his work. So, yeah, The Fugitive, that's a yeah. that's a solid, yeah. solid yeah. film, actually. You know what other movie influenced me a lot as a young yeah. person with Sneakers? My brother for a while. Oh, the Robert Redford River Phoenix movie. Yep, 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 yep. yep. About, like, you know, uh, uh, a team of misfits – um, yeah. together um lots of lots of humor and lots of great like mystery turns like yeah. a, a great mystery turn it's like when there's a mystery is there something it's like we don't know the answer then suddenly we go from not knowing the answer to knowing the answer and we get there in like a cool way like yeah. that's always really exciting to me um that's because been a while I, since i've seen that one i might i might not have seen watch it. The it, it holds up it really holds up yeah okay I think Cindy Poitier was in that too. He is, yeah, he is, and he's, he's a really lot. Cool. There's a lot of people in that movie. Yeah, uh, yeah Ben Kingsley is in it. Um, oh, is he? God, I yeah, I totally forgot that. Yeah, uh, the, the, there is a lot of people in that movie. <laughs> well, Emily, I really appreciate you taking the time today. Congratulations on the success of Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, it's still in theaters. Um, I'm sure you know by the end of or beginning end of summer, beginning of fall, it'll be on video um and more people will get to see it too it's 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 a you know a great cap to the the next this next uh series with jurassic world and good luck on everything else too i'm eager to see thank what you. you have next thank you so much thank you you have a great rest of your day you too all right bye